Hello everyone, welcome to Digital Systems by Logic Design. My name is Michael and today I'm going to be showing you, I'm going to be talking to you really about base 2 numbers which are more, are more commonly known as binary numbers and I'm also going to be showing you how to convert from a base 2 number to a base 10 number or a decimal number or just a common number, a number you'll see every day and I'll also show you how to convert from a decimal number to a base 2 number. Now let's get started. To illustrate what it means to have a base on a number. Um, I'm going to show you a base 10 number, 312. Um, you'll notice that I put this little subscript here, and you don't have to square that, I'm just doing it to show. Um, that's normally assumed. It basically just means, hey, we have a base 10 number here. This is um, 312, not 312 in some other number system. Like, you know, on binary, you have 100, zero, zero, you don't have 100. Um, let me rewrite this in a way you've probably seen, probably in elementary school, I'm assuming. Um, it's 300 plus 10 plus 2. Um, so you see, I'm just separating it by the tens powers. Now, let me even take this a little, a little bit further. Let me say this is just 3 times 10 to the second plus 1 times 10 to the first plus 2 times 10 to the 0 with. Now, hopefully you'll realize now that this is equal to this, and if not, I'll, I'll show you really quick. Um, anything to the 0 with is 1 times 2 is just going to be 2. Um, anything to 1 is itself, so it's 10 times 1, it's just going to be 10. Um, anything, this is just um, 10 squared is 100 times 3 is 300, because you should do an exponent first. Um, so this is equal to this, which is therefore equal to this. But um, when you when you look at our numbers, every nu every um, digit three, one, and two is some multiple of ten to a power, a base ten to a, a power, an exponent. Um, and hopefully this illustrates a little bit of another way of thinking about our number systems, the number systems we use every day and stuff. So. Um, here, I'll show you an example of a base 2, or binary, number. Um, this is going to be 0, 1, 0, 1, cause it's a good, simple first number. And I put a, I'm putting a 2 as a subscript, just to illustrate. Now, you'll notice down here that this was the 0th power. This was the first, and this was the second. I'm going to, up here, do the same thing. I'm going to label these, because that's, that's really the easiest way to go about it. I always label the um, position so that I can copy it down correctly. So we have 0 times, here's your difference right here. This is going to be a 2 because it's a base 2. 0 times 2 to the third plus 1 times 2 to the second plus 0 times 2 to the first plus 1 times 2 to the zero with. Now, this is really the first step in converting to a decimal number. The second step would be to realize that these guys right here are something times zero, and as you should know, anything times zero is zero, so we can really get rid of those. And I'm going to write them down here just for the sake of keeping them and showing you later what, what's happening here, really. Um, well, here we have two to the second, which is four times one, which is four. And that's kind of an easy, I like that. Um, anything to the zeroth is 1 times 1 is 1. So this is equal to 5 in base 10. Um, well, you'll notice, and you've seen, you've seen binary code before, it's a bunch of 1s and zeros, right? It's 1 and a 0. In binary code, 1, in this, well, before I do this, um, this is really one of the most fundamental aspects of circuit design. Um, 1 means on or high power, but that's only, it usually just means on, logically speaking, and 0 means off. And I can illustrate this with um, what I've already done, actually. Um, see here, the bit, these are called bits, bits, 1 and 0. The bit at 2 to the third is 0, therefore it is off. Therefore, it comes down to zero. The bit here is also zero, so there is off. 
the bit here is 1, so it's on. You'll notice the 1 really doesn't play a part, and the 0 don't really play a part other than to say, this is off, so we're not going to keep it. This is on, so we're going to keep it. This is off, so we're not going to keep it. This is on, so we're going to keep it. Um, and in the end, you have your number. Now, of course, you should know over here, you don't have bits, you have digits. And your digits are 0 through 9. You have 10, base 10. Again, that, that's how it relates. And here you have just 0 and 1. There are 2, base 2. Um, hopefully you can see just really quick, I'm going to say, just how this, this is the only difference, really, in this in converting between this number system. All right. Let me start over here. Okay. Now I'm going to show you a quick example. Well, not a quick example, because you should put some time into this one. This is a little bit different from what we just saw. A good bit different, actually. I'm going to show you how to convert from a base 10, from a base 10, to um, to a base 2. All right. So let's take the number 53 in base 10. I like it because it's a nice. Oops, that looks kind of bad. I like because it's a nice odd number. Odd numbers are fun to work with because. With an odd number, I um, you'll always get a one in the least significant bit. Um, and you'll see that happening here. You'll see that happening every time you have an odd number. All right. So your first step in doing this is you're going to divide it by two, but you're using a form of integer division in which you're going to truncate the result. So this divided by two is really 26. 26. 0.5, but you're going to do something that they com that in computer science and computer engineering, electrical engineering, all around the board they're going to call truncating. Truncate literally means to get rid of the trash on the end. Um, so we're going to get rid of that. And what you do is now you look at it and say, okay, if I multiplied this by 26, or in other words, if I multi if I divided this my remainder would be what? And you want to store the remainder over here. This is the most important part to this. Um, your remainder would be 1. And in base 2, you're only going to have two options. You're only going to have a 1 and a 0 as a remainder. So let's keep going. Um, 2 into 26 is 13. It goes in 13 times. Um, and your remainder is 0. And you want to store that because that's going to help you later to develop your bit, your um, binary number. Um, 2 into 13 is 6.5, but we're going to truncate. We're getting rid of the 0.5, um, and your remainder is going to be 1. 2. Okay, 2 into 6 is going to have a remainder of 0, and you're going to a 3. 2 into 3 is going to have a remainder of 1, and it's going to be 1.5, but of course you're truncating again. Um, this is where it gets a little bit weird. I mean, it just feels weird. It, it makes sense, logically. 2 goes into 1 zero times, but there's a remainder of 1. Um, and of course, you can keep going with this, but you're going to keep getting zeros, and it's going to keep resulting, like you're going to keep getting a zero, 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 and it's really not important. It's not significant enough for us to keep. Now, this here is your least significant bit, and this here is your most significant bit. Um, so your binary number then becomes one, one, zero, one, zero. And this is, of course, base two equals 53 in base 10. Um, and of course, if you want to verify this, you can. Here, I'll, I um, typed up a verification of it, and I'll move it over here just for a moment so that you can verify. You can pause your screen if you want and verify that. Okay, um, and that's really all she wrote for today. Um, if you want to test these, if you want to make yourself better at converting, you can basically make up problems. You can make up problems like this, really. You can say, okay, does 18 base 10 equal 10010? Um, and then you can go through the steps and you can convert it either way. You can say, make this into binary or make this into decimal. And if it turns out to be the one or the other, you, you got it. You know, you have a right system. Um, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. This is basically the most fundamental aspect of logic design.